Hey guys, this is Billy Starks, and you're watching the O-Face Wrestling Podcast. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today on O-Face Wrestling. This is your host, JT, and today I am joined by the Space Jesus, Billy Starks. So thanks for joining us today, Billy. Thanks for having me. Hey. Absolutely. I'm really excited to have you on the show. I've been seeing, you know, a lot of you on social media. I really like your character. It's, you know, very sci-fi-ish and I'm a big sci-fi nerd. So I'm really intrigued to learn more about you and your career and everything like that. So um, let's get started with these questions. So the first question, the one that you probably get asked, like every interview you do, um, what inspired you to become a professional wrestler? So my stepfather, who's Mouse Wrestling Adventures, he's a, he's a photographer, uh, he introduced me to wrestling, and for some reason, I just fell in love with it. Uh, it just clicked for me, and it stuck with me for the first time I watched wrestling until now, that this is what I wanted to be doing. So now that you're doing it, is it what you expected it to be? Most of it, yes. There are times where it shocks me. Like, when told I'm someone's favorite wrestler, it, like, takes me back for a second, because I think of, like, oh, this person was my favorite wrestler. I don't understand how I can make people feel that way, but it means that I'm doing something special, so it feels good at the same time. Exactly. It's like the roles are reversed. Like you went from being a fan and idolizing, you know, these people that you see on TV and now you're the one being idolized by, you know, fans in the crowd and all. And I just, I can just only imagine how great of a feeling that must, you know, be to feel that way. And, you know, people lining up to get your autograph, you know, podcasters reaching out to you to be on their show, stuff like that. So that just has to be an amazing feeling. It's such like... It feels like, oh, oh, it's kind of fulfilling. Like, you're like, oh, uh, I'm making people happy in this sort of way. And you're like, it's good that, like, like you can have the power to do that for others. Exactly. Like, and um, I mean, like, as a fan, it really means a lot, like, just the interactions we get from you all and stuff like that. So we just definitely really appreciate everything you do for us, uh, you know, what you do in the ring. And then, of course, you know, the meet and greets and stuff like that. So uh, now the, the question that I'm most excited to ask you, um, I want to know about your character. Like, what, where, where did your inspiration come from? Like, I even know, like, on one of your theme songs from one of the matches I saw on YouTube, you had the Blink-182 song that talks about, like, UFOs and all. So I just want to know, like, how that all came together. Yeah, so uh, I'm Billy Stark, Space Jesus. Uh, all this stuff is really just me, just turned up and, like, so extra. Um, like, I don't know how it happened. It just kind of has happened. Uh, I chose out the song Blink-182 because I was like, oh, this fits, like, what I'm going, like, going for. Um, I also think it's such a catchy song. Um, <laughs> and I've got a lot of comments about it. This is actually, uh, so the first song I came out to was Little Monsters and then I finally was like this really isn't fitting what I'm doing and then I change it up, up and then started coming out Blink-182 and it's just I feel like it's made me honestly more like when I am making my entrance it feels more right. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it just, it really, like, blends well with you and you come out, and, like, the thing is, like, I, I love that song, it's a fantastic song, but I feel like it's, just, you know, it's not one of their most popular songs either, like, it doesn't get enough recognition as what it deserves, just because, you know, they have so many hits throughout the years, and it just kind of just falls down the charts, but it, it's one of those songs I really like, I only heard it from their CD, like, I don't think they had a music video or anything like that, but it's a fantastic song. Completely agree. So what about, like, the whole, like, Space Jesus? Like, how did that, like, come up? Like, how did you come up with that? So it's kind of a joke, but I've kind of made it into my own thing. 
uh, there was this guy that showed up to a seminar. I wasn't there, sadly. I was supposed to be there, but then I ended up having a show. So at the seminar, uh, Jimmy Jacobs is going around asking people, like, what they do? And this guy goes, oh, I'm a street fighter. And take in mind, he's wearing, like, the, like, leather gloves, the fingerless gloves. Uh, this is, like, <laughs> this is best. And like, just, um, and he goes, "Oh, I'm a street fighter." And Jimmy's like, "Ah, uh, it's kind of basic. We need more." And he's like, "Uh, but I'm a street fighter. That's like who I am." And he's like, "Okay, but like, still, I need more." And he's like, "I think this will explain it all." And proceeds to take off this vest and this shirt, and what is revealed is alien Jesus walking across water on his chest, tattooed, and. <laughs> For some reason, the student thought, oh, my tattoo explains my gimmick. Yes, alien Jesus walking across water. Perfect. Street fighter. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, that, but Jimmy cool Jacobs tattoo. just is like, okay, and then moves on. Like, he doesn't question it. <laughs> uh, so this guy got the nickname of Space Jesus. And at a show on that Friday, because that show happened on a Sunday, I believe, that Friday, uh, the ring announcer was there at that the show on Sunday and he was there on Friday and he made a joke in the locker room and was like who wants to be announced as Space Jesus and I sat there and I was like I want to be announced as Space Jesus and I just took it from that day on and like kind of morphed it into something else but it all just started from this guy who was just ridiculous <laughs> uh, I am waiting for the day that like I run into him and I have to wrestle this man with alien Jesus on his chest <laughs> I, I just, like, I think that's just so funny. Like, I, I think that's such a dope tattoo. Like, I feel like they need T-shirts with that now. Like, if there's not already, we need, like, an alien walking across water. Like, that needs to be a thing. Like, I just want to know where he got that idea to get a tattoo like that. You know, I think that's awesome. That's, like, one of those pieces that you get tattooed and you sit there like, ah, I feel like this was I feel like it's one of those ones that you make you make that decision to get like when you're like drinking alcohol or something like that. Like I'm gonna get a tattoo. Let me get an alien walking across water. Like you know, something like that. That's the kind of like scenario I can see someone getting something like that. Cause I, I love aliens and UFOs, but I would never think so something like that. You know, like I you know I just I just got it. It's one of those very interesting tattoos that you have no idea the backstory behind it until you set that person down. I really, like, I want to meet this man, but at the same time, I don't, because <laughs> uh, of other stories I've heard about him, but I'm like, oh my god, this man is very interesting, he's living his best life. <laughs> is, I can tell. <laughs> All right, so now my next question uh, for you, so you were at one point a party monster champion, so that's, I've never heard of a title with, like, that kind of names. I think that's really interesting, so tell me a little bit about that title and that promotion. So, the funny thing is, I didn't wrestle for that title at its home promotion. Jody, who was the champion uh, that I faced, he wrestled me at Paris Wrestling during the no hook season. And uh, uh, he's from the titles from, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but the title happened that. I did it then to my wrestle Sandra Moon. So on for Jody Stephens, when it gets him in the first time defending it, I lost it. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to say it, but I, I looked and I saw on, um, on the website that I saw that on. It was like a 14-day title reign or something like that. Yeah, it did not last long. <laughs> I mean, at least you got a title, though. I mean, that's better than, you know, not at all, in my opinion, you know. And you got to say you are a party monster champion. I think that's <laughs> Adding it to the list. <laughs> exactly like a lot of people don't always remember how long the title reign was they just you know if you look at the stat sheet like oh well you were a champion you know what i mean so you don't have to tell people it's 14 days <laughs> so 
So now my next question I got for you though, this is um one of those like non-wrestling related questions. So what about yourself that is, you know, non-wrestling related that you're like proud of or you would want to share with the listeners, like, or, you know, a big gamer, Jersey Shore fan or, you know, something like that? Uh, I'm a big fan of Call of Duty. I haven't played in a while actually, because I'm so used to being like playing with people and uh, my friends like, they're like, I work, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I'll get home from a wrestling show super late. I'm like, I want to play video games. <laughs> uh, but like Cole Roderick will randomly play with me, but then he'll always be garbage. I'll say, turn to your left and he'll turn to the right. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I love Call of Duty I'm myself. Very- but um, I, I have to play sometime. What was that? We'll have to play sometime. Uh, yeah, like definitely, like um, I like, I want to. I think the newest one that's supposed to come out. I saw something today. Actually, I think it's kind of like going back to the World War Two kind of theme. I think. Um, I tried out Warzone. I don't know if that's the one you've recently played because I know that was free, but I played it for a little bit. It, t- it took up so much space on my hard drive. I was like, wow, it was like almost 100 gigabytes, I think. Yeah, both like the Call of Duties take up so much space on my Xbox. Uh, I actually, the first uh, Call of Duty, the game that I played was War because I got into it over the quarantine and then when the new one came out I bought that and my brother was like you never got to experience like the good zombies now this is your first zombies it's not the same he was like (laughs) he was like you have to go back and play the old ones too so he's been trying to convince me to do that with him yeah, like, I've never really dug into the zombie mode too much because I don't really have many friends online that play it, and I know that's kind of something you need to do with other people. I hate playing with randoms, and when I try playing by myself, you just get demolished. Like, it's it's not fun, and um, I, I forgot which Call of Duty it was. I think it's the one that came out, like, two years ago. It was the online only or multiplayer only. Like, it did not have a campaign mode, and I bought it thinking it had campaign mode, and it didn't have it, so I just kind of got stuck playing zombies for a little bit. I was like, I kind of got to get my money's worth of it, but I just kept getting destroyed by everyone, you know, by all the zombies. It gets it gets really hard really fast on that. You're like, this is what I wanted. But it's like, I, I just, I, I got one friend, she was playing the crap out of it, but she kind of cooled down and like, I think like the Need for Speed, like remastered edition came out. So she kind of fell off Call of Duty and started playing that. But yeah, Call of Duty is always fun. I, for the longest time, I was always into it for the, um, the single player. But then I know, like, I think it was Modern Warfare 2 is the one I really got into the online. And I played religiously with that one. Like I prestige so many times, but that was a long time ago. I honestly need to get my level up like I'm so bad about like I'll just go for the objectives like I don't pay attention to like oh I need long shots to get this gun gold or like I need to do this it like casually happens and then all my friends are like oh uh I just upgraded all my ARs I'm going to the submachine guns and I'm like oh you guys are trying (laughs) (laughs) I was just here just playing I I thought we were supposed to do the goals <laughs> i was one of those uh, I people hate who did them that when like the name tags will play the, the dog tags. nah I, I i'm one of those people like i'll we'll be playing like the name tags and no one else is like picking up the name tags i'm running around just killing myself because i'm like i just gotta pick up the tags and the rest of them are like I can't die, but not picking up they're doing like long shots and sitting places i'm like you can't sit in this game campers yeah i i always cannot stand it i i forgot all about that game with the the name tags picking them up on i remember that was really fun that's the one i did like the best at because you know you don't need that to kill people you just steal you know they do all the killing and you just run and take the tags and stuff like that but like that's the thing i really liked about call of duty online there were so many different like game modes and different things you could do like you said like all the different camouflage weapons and all the different kind of stuff you could add to your weapons. It was like, it was really fun. It was very time consuming. 
like I'd play and I feel like I'm there for like 20 minutes and I look like two hours goes by. I'm like, holy smokes, like the, the time flies so fast playing Call of Duty. I completely <sighs> waste so much time because I'm like, oh, I should, I'm just going to play like a game or two and then finish some work. It does not end up being like a game or two. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You cannot just sit down and play Call of Duty just for a game or two. It don't work that way. Now, my final question that I have for you, this is one of those kind of like dream, you know, fantasy booking kind of scenarios. So if you were signed by WWE hypothetically and you had a WrestleMania match and you could pick your opponent, it could be anyone from WWE or even like the indies. Like, who would you pick? Who would you want to go toe to toe with on the biggest spotlight? Millie McKenzie. She recently signed me and she's one of my dream opponents. Like. I would watch her magic matches she had at Progress or when she tagged with Pete Pete Dunn and I just fell in love with her. Like I don't know why, but like the way she wrestles is like it it's one of those things when I watch her matches, they like I will be entertained. Like I lose my sense of I'm a wrestler at that time. Like I when I watch wrestling I break it down a lot. Um and it's hard for me to truly be like entertained. Like I can appreciate what it's what people are doing. But for me to be entertained, she does that for me for some reason. I think it's just because of how, like, she's very charismatic. And it just, like, clicks with me. And I'm like, yes. Um, and then all, everything she does in the ring, to me, just seems so crisp. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, so I feel like if I got my WrestleMania moment and I got to choose my opponent, it would definitely be her. Like, I would have so much fun. Would you add any, like, stipulation to that match as well? Or would you just want it to be a regular singles match? Oh, I I feel like we could have really good fun with, like, an Iron Man match for some reason. Um, or, like, something where it was almost, like, no rules. Like, you can use whatever you find. <laughs> uh, but either way, I feel I feel like we would on a banger no matter who. Yeah, I feel like you don't always need a stipulation to have, like, a very memorable match. Like, I know, like, Sasha versus Bailey at TakeOver years ago. No stipulation, but that match was so magical. It's just, like, being able to tell a story in the ring. Like, that's what that's what people remember at the end of the day. Yeah. So, um... I completely agree. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Like everyone, you know, I mean, it, it, the, the cool spots with like thumbtacks and fire and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. People like remember that one or two moments, but it's like people more so talk about the matches with the story, you know? So, um, Billy, um, that's all the questions I had for you. So I just have to thank you so much for joining us today on O Face Wrestling. It was really fun chatting with you and definitely like talking about Call of Duty and everything. That was really dope. Thank you so much for having me. I had so much fun. Absolutely. No problem at all. So, uh, Billy, do you want to share your social media with all the listeners so they know where to find you? Sure. All of my social media is at Billy Starks, B-I-L-L-I-E, and then Starks is S-T-A-R-K-Z. Um, that's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Go check out my stuff. Um, and if you want to grab any merch um it's linked in my twitter so you can go check that out all right everyone make sure you go check her out on social media like she said twitter facebook instagram also check out her merch i will have all the links for all of that in the bio below also make sure that you give us a sub on youtube follow us on facebook twitter instagram and tiktok thank you all so much for listening and thank you so much again billy for joining us today on no face wrestling thank you so much for having Absolutely. Bye, everyone.